In today's video, I'm going to share with you a really simple method that you can use to achieve this inverted border radius effect that you can see on these four containers here. So this will work on any element within Elementor and it will also work on containers. So this is an icon element, this is a button, this is a heading and this is a container element that contains a heading and a button. So this is a really clean method to achieve this. It's really quite simple. So you can see here in the edit page, we've got our parent containers here and all that sits within them is the actual elements themselves. So here we've got the icon, the button, the heading and then the container here that contains the elements. So there's no excess containers going on here. It's quite a clean method to achieve this. So what I'll do is I've created a blank page here with our containers ready to be populated. And I'll just show you how you go about achieving this for various different elements. So I've renamed the containers here just for clarity. So this one is a top left icon. So we want an icon in the top left. So I'll add my icon. Uh, we'll use an arrow and I'll just restyle it. So we'll make it 40 pixel, 315 degrees and we'll make it dark. And then we'll add some padding around it just so that when we make the background white, it sort of looks like it's sitting outside of the parent container when it's still within it. So icons usually contain a bit of space below them, which is a little bit annoying with Elementor, but what that means is I'll just add less padding to the bottom and it'll appear equal on every side. And then I'll add my background of white. And this is white just so it matches the background of the main parent container so it blends in. So we'll leave that one like that for now and I'll do the same for a button uh, in the top right. This will sit in the top right of this container because I've set align items to end and by default the content's justified to the start. So I'll add my button now. Uh, and like previously, I'll add some padding here. I'll add 12 this time and I'll give it a background of white. Again, so it blends in. This one is a bottom left heading. So this one will sit in the bottom left because I've set justify content to end and align items to start. So now once I add my heading, I'll just reduce that in size. Uh, once I add my heading, it sits in the bottom left. And then I'll add some padding here of 12. I'll just add some extra on the right so it looks a bit more balanced. And then I'll make the background white again. And then finally, this one's a little bit more complicated but we'll add a container here. What we want to do is make sure the width of the container is only as wide as the content within the container of the elements. So we'll set it to fit content. We'll set it to row, horizontal and align item center. And now we'll add a heading. Again, I'll just redo, delete some words. And we'll also add, uh, we'll add an icon. Now just reduce this in size. 30. Uh, I'll also just reduce the gap between elements. But once I've done that, the container, like everything else, will add padding to every side. And we'll add a background color of white. Again, so it blends in with the main parent. So now we've got our four containers with our four elements in each corner. We now need to add the border radiuses. So first of all, we'll add the border, uh, border, we'll have the border radiuses that we can add without custom CSS. So this is the border radius of the elements uh, of the bottom corner that is closest to the center of the parent. So in this case, it is a bottom corner. In this case, it's a top corner. So for the icon here, if we go into border radius, uh, border, it'll be the border radius of the bottom. And I'll set that to 20 just so it matches the border radius of the parent. But this uh, value is completely up to you. It's your preference. 
you can set it greater or less than 20 depending on your designs again as well for this button we're going to border set the border radius of the left now to 20 so that's now 20 heading um advanced border border radius we'll set the right to 20 and then finally the container will set the uh, top to 20. so this is what we can do within elementor without custom code so we're getting closer to what we want to achieve but now we'll use a bit of custom css to apply these inverted border radiuses and this these work by using pseudo elements which you can see here this is a code pen that i'm including in the video description so the pseudo elements actually use a box shadow to achieve the look of an inverted border so what you'll want to do for your designs is just tweak for 20 every time you see 20 pixel just tweak that to the pixel value of your border radiuses so it occurs three times here for each element so for elements in the top left so in our case top left is this icon we want to use this code so any element that's in the top left just copy and paste this in to the custom css and then what you'll see is nothing changes at the moment because as i've put in my code here remember to set the z index to one on the element of a container so currently you can't see anything happening because the z index for the pseudo elements for the actual inverted borders we're creating is negative one so they're all hidden below so we need to go into layout of the icon where you've put the custom css and just set the z index to one and it will now become visible so that's the first one done so i'll just publish that the next one is an element in the top right and the one after that is an element in the bottom left so if we go back to the code it's an element in the top right is the button so we'll copy that in select the button make sure the z index is set to one set the custom css copy and paste that in and you can see the button is now working correctly the next one is an element in the bottom left because it's a heading element so we'll go back in we'll set the heading to z index of one and we'll just paste in our css and publish that the last one isn't an element in the bottom right because it's a container so rather than copying this code i've created a new set of code for containers because they're very slightly different values for these for these positions so there's four sets of code for elements so each corner and then there's four separate sets of code for containers so each corner so this container is in the bottom right so we'll copy this and paste it in here to this container set the z index to one and we'll now see once we've copied that in and published we can see it all working here so that's how easy it is to apply this effect if you just copy and paste in the relevant code so as i said earlier there's four sets where four for elements four for containers for elements and containers the first one in the top left is actually the same but everything else is different so just for clarity i've created two sets of code and then yeah like i say if you want to change the width from 20 pixel to match your design then by all means do so otherwise just use 20 pixel and it'll work nicely if your designs like this so yeah I hope that's helped and I'll see you in the next video.